this is a little a little different type of video. Normally I'm I'm talking about shower. This whole thing is an addition. This is an addition. This is I think the um, the homeowner said it was 300 or 400 square feet of additional room that this contractor came in. You can see where the house ends. This used to be a sunroom. And so he poured this entire slab, he put up the walls, he, everything you see here, this contractor did. And when I say contractor, I mean this guy was a licensed contractor because he had inspections pulled on every step of the way and blah, blah, blah. But he screwed up in a lot of different ways. One of them was that apparently, I guess when they put the rafters on for this new roof over here, the rafters were down almost to this doorway here. So the homeowner had to say, oh, no, no, that wasn't the plan. The plan was to have it contiguous where that roof line, or sorry, that ceiling line matched the inside ceiling line over there. So then retroactively, he had to bump up from where he had started that. And that's important to know later on. Anyway, we get into the shower area. So, you know, at first glance, it's like, oh, okay, it's just kind of a rough out type of build. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of mistakes here made. I'm not a general contractor, um, but I have a long history in building construction. Going back, you know, years and years ago when I was a fireman, I had to have a certain knowledge of how structures are built in order yeah, and then I have a, a longer history in home repair and uh, apartment maintenance and all kinds of stuff. So I know a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff, even though, and I could basically build a house. I don't do roofs and I don't do, there are a couple of things that I don't do, I don't have a knowledge of and I don't do. But this guy was a builder, so there's a lot of stuff here that he did wrong. Um, so a couple of things here, right off the bat, this is, this was done in November, mm, fall going into fall of last year. And so we're only four months down the road. Four months down the road, we already have a cracked concrete surface, which is not good. Because if it's cracked now, only four or five months down the road, will that crack increase? And I don't know if it will or not, but you should, definitely should not have a crack this close. And I don't know if the PSI content of the cement wasn't right, the concrete wasn't right, as it were. Um, there's a lot, a lot of there's so much stuff here, this will be end up being an hour-long video if I went through everything. And I'm sure there's builders out there that will chime in on some of the other things that I'm missing. But a couple of things that kind of scream out right off the bat is that this guy came in with Red Guard and started Red Guarding. Um, I don't know why, and the homeowner doesn't know why either, but he started Red Guarding all of his wood. And that's a mystery. Like, why? 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 Um, we knew, or the homeowner knew, there was going to be a shower and set the parameter of the curb, which is this line and this line. So the curb was going to go up to there. But what do you see here? You see an open spot. And this open spot continues. And so the homeowner said to the guy, hey, well, how come you didn't put a 2x4 here? So what he did, not the homeowner, what the contractor did is he just scabbed in. <laughs> I think it's glued down with the red guard. He just scabbed in these, these scrap 2x4s which is really weird until you get down to the plumbing end. Like, why didn't he put a vertical one in? Well, because the plumber came in here with PEX and went right through the wall so that you can't physically put another 2x4 in here because the plumber came in after the framing was done. And um, So now the bigger issue is when you have this curb, you're going to need some type of scabbing. You're going to need some type of girthy material to hold your glass. And so, yes, you could potentially take a 2x4 and put it sideways up here, were it not for your only three-quarter of an inch here. So now this has to be rerouted somehow into the back and then a notch out with a 2x4 going in, you know, straight in. A couple of 2x4s going straight in with a notch out going on. Um, and so that that's just crazy. Um, but the plumber really didn't have a clue either because he's using sharp bites on PEX which is really, really weird, um, to me anyway. Um, if you're going to use PEX, then why are you using sharp bites? Like everywhere you see, there's there's sharp bites. And I'm sure there's sharp bites behind the wall, too. Speaking of the wall, look at this. This would drive me crazy. I don't want to do it. i got to jump around a lot because one thing leads to another. This would drive me crazy. I'm a symmetrical type of guy, and I have this hot, hot and cold down here where the vanity is going to be 
Like when you have, it's not like this was a redo. This is brand new construction. So why would you put the hot and cold, you know, seven inches down at a diagonal from where your plumbing is at? And then we get to the plumbing and there's a studer there. And there's a studer on the other side, because there's a laundry room on the other side, there's a studer over there too. So I'm asking the homeowner why that happened. Drain, vent. <laughs> Brand new construction. So we get up to this area, there's an attic up here, and the pitch of the roof is this way. So there's no reason that that vent stack couldn't have just been brought up in there. That vent stack shares in with the toilet and the shower over here. And so all three of those have to vent out. But currently, they're going to bend out into the studer that's going to be inside of the wall. Not even inside of the wall. It's going to be slightly outside of the wall, inside of the vanity. Why can't we go up there? Because, look at this hodgepodge of building mistakes. That is just bizarre. But, and that's why I said I keep jumping around from thing to thing, because one ties into the next. So normally, as a header, you have a couple of 2x4s sitting up there. And then you have your truss and your roofing, blah, blah, blah. So he has three 2x4s up there and then two 2x6s two sitting on top, sandwiched together on the top. Why? Because of what I was talking about earlier. Because of the roof, sorry, the whole wall system had to be raised. So rather than take out all the 2x4s along this whole thing and put in proper 2x4s, he just kind of hacked everything in there which is literally what he did. He just hacked everything in there. Two by sixes that weren't even fully end to end going on there. And two by sixes, just a couple of them up like, I don't know, that's just bizarre. But that's the reason why there's a studer there because no way you're gonna get a two inch hole going through all of that. That's just not gonna happen. Um, so that's a shame that that happened and and just scabbed stuff in like scabbed scabbed a 2x4 in here to anchor the Yeah Look I can get my whole finger back there. Just it, it's just a hodgepodge of, of mistakes that I'm like wow really like I don't know I'm at a loss for words one of the things that irritates me most about slab construction is that Plumbers have no compunction. Look at this. There's no reason why this is fine, but this is so close to the edge. How are you going to get any scabbing in here? I think the homeowner started to put in 2x6 scabbing over here, but it's not going to happen over there because of that reason. So now you can only get one piece of maybe 3 quarter or 5 inch ply, kind of toenail it in with a, front, with a, a finishing nailer um, to scab that, but this is kind of, this stops you from doing any of that stuff. Um, this still trips me out. Like, you're doing pecs with sharp bites that's going to be encapsulated, which is not a big deal. So, anytime I pick on little things that are happening, it, it's not just the little things alone, it's the preponderance of all the mistakes in, combined that, that are going on that kind of, and then, and then here we are now, my camera is facing this way. What's wrong with this picture, right? So, sheetrock goes, and the sheetrock guy should know this, right? So the carpenter guy messed up, the plumber messed up, and then she guy, guy comes along, you know, last week or last whatever, how long he was here, and puts it straight onto the slab. That's a big no-no. It should be raised up at least half an inch off the slab, all the way around. All the way around. This whole addition has sheetrock sitting right on the floor, which is really weird. <sighs> so many things here. So many, so many, so many things here. Nothing is center. So for the curb at... Sorry, from where the curb is at currently, which is about 15 inches off of here, where the curb will be eventually, assuming they're going to do a curb, you have a center point that should be about where where this is. That's the center point. So now the homeowner has to kind of cut out this 2x4 area or somehow make it so that all of this moves back over there. And so what I'm suggesting is just cutting out your piping over here and run your piping through there, bringing it over, and then you can get pretty much center by the time this valve is. But this is a different type of valve. It's got these shutoffs, which I absolutely 100% love that they have, you know, inline shutoffs. Um, but he won't get this center without doing something, yeah. And so that's a shame too. And so then we get to the drain area, and that's a shame because that's not center to anything. That's not center 
Well, it is centered to this off-center valve, but that's all it's centered to. <laughs> it's way off. They poured this slab. As I mentioned when I first came on, they poured this slab. So the plumbing was already done prior, like, mm, somewhere or another, people weren't following each other. The carpenter wasn't talking to the plumber. The plumber wasn't, I don't think a plumber, but he wasn't talking to the carpenter who wasn't talking to the mason. I mean, a lot of people, there's a lot of mistakes here made by a lot of people that in combination just it was a real hack job by a builder. So then we have this thing going on, which is really weird. This was not supposed to be a curbless shower. But they started to make it like it was one, first of all. And that's really weird. I've never seen a pour like that on a slab that was directional to, well, first of all, an offset drain. The drain's not even level as I'm looking at it. It was counter levered kind of that way in that direction. So I'm sure the drain isn't level. Um, floor doesn't look to be level either. I didn't bring a level with me, so I can't speak to that, but it doesn't look level. Um, but but the, this is kind of... Uh, sloped in as if it were going to be a curbless shower and I think the homeowner had mentioned that they kind of wanted a curbless shower when they poured the slab this would have been an excellent idea had he done it on the entire thing but he didn't so now they're in this little weird conundrum not only are they off center so they got to cut into the concrete to make it center which is a lot of work because the plumbing is running in that direction so they got to dig down this four or five inches in the concrete a trough cut it off down to the dirt, cut off the pipe and bring another 90 coming up. Plus, they already encapsulated the whole thing. You can't get a shower drain flange on here with everything encapsulated the way it is now. Uh, so it should have been built into a box and then whoever does a shower fill in the box. So the box would have been here center and you would have been looking at dirt. That's how a stub out is supposed to be in most situations but not in this one. So there's a lot of a lot of things going on here, and I again I can I can go on and on and on, but I this is kind of a heads up if you're going to have an addition to oh and then another thing too, the homeowner mentioned to me that he doesn't think that this is the proper depth for this either, which I don't think it is, but the plumber didn't save the mud guard. The mud guard goes on here specifically to show you the parameter of your finished wall with the tile on and all that stuff. The, the outside and the inside part of where your finished wall is, that's what the mud guard is, and it protects all of this brass body. But where's the mud guard? So that has to be kind of feathered out too and, and kind of found out if that's going to be workable at all. Um, but the whole point of, and the reason that I'm, that's just so, so bad, the reason I'm doing this is because people talk about Oh, you know, get a contractor who's licensed and insured and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Licensed and insured doesn't mean anything. I mean, like, literally, it doesn't mean anything. It means that you were able to pass some type of test, but it doesn't mean that you're doing the job right. It doesn't mean that necessarily the, the inspector... So there are a lot of things that uh, an inspector should be looking for on every part, every aspect of this stuff. But eventually, if you're hiring somebody to do something, you're the boss. And apparently the homeowner was kind of foo-fooed away when he complained about some of these things, except for raising the roof, which they did, but they hacked up. Um, but eventually, you know, when you see something like this, hey, sheetrock guy, you're supposed to be half an inch above, da-da-da. And the homeowner said he said that, but they went ahead as normal. When I do work, every customer I have is my boss, and if they're asking me to do something, then I do it. You know, even if I have to charge them more for something that we didn't talk about, get things in writing. Make sure that all this stuff is in writing. I do a contract for every job I do, and I let my customer go over the contract, and if there's something I miss, then I do an addendum to that or whatever, but, you know, st stick to your guns on stuff. Like, this costs this guy you know, multi-thousands of dollars to have this done to, to be hacked up. I, all of this stuff is nonsensical to me as a non-builder. I'm not a builder. I don't build additions. I don't build houses. But I know about this common sense type of stuff. And, you know, you should know about all this stuff too. And that's getting back to what I said earlier. I hijacked my own conversation. Know what you're... 
these are all the little things that if you get into a build process and you see any of this stuff going on, even 16 on center, like he wants a niche on center, but he, he can't really do it. He's going to have to cut out two of studs to make a long niche like I do because he's not 16 inches off center. There's no reason he had to put this 2x4 right there. 16 on center, 16 on center, which is not currently, would have been about here, and then your middle stud would, yeah. I mean, a simple thing like that. How you how do you do framing and not know 16 on center? I don't know. I, I went on too long already, so I hope <laughs> I hope in some way, form, or fashion this kind of helped you out if you get into a situation like this. Because you know I, I've only talked for 20 minutes now, but it's 20 minutes too long. I shouldn't be having to make these videos on a new build. It's crazy. See that? That's replicated over here. Why? There's no reason for that. The only reason for that is because they had to raise the roof, you know, like there was attic space above there. So there's some way it could have been manipulated around. I'm just suggesting that you look at there. And then they have still their supply lines are at least center, but the, why are they below, you know, like bring them up to level with the drain or whatever. I don't know. Um, again, not on too long, so I don't want to keep on going on. Oh, by the way, this is the backer board that uh, homeowner took off. This is all quarter inch, quarter inch backer board. <laughs> See these screw marks? That's where the backer board used to be. Half inch sheetrock, quarter inch backer board. That's some crazy, crazy stuff going on. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. Talk too much already. Hope, hope I help somebody. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.